So for this particular problem, we have to kind of keep in mind what these actual equilibria constants stand for. And so when we kind of go through and actually look at these Ks and these Kcs, you have to understand that this is just a representation of how these things are going to progress in order to reach equilibrium. And so when we start talking about these and we start talking about overall reactions, we have to understand the fact, I guess you have to go back and remember your Gen Chem 1 material. And so say that we have equation 1, equation 2, and both of these are given your Kc values. And so very similarly to in Gen Chem 2, whenever you're giving these two equations and I'm saying add these two equations to solve for that, you can again kind of add these two up, cancel out units that don't belong there, so on and so forth. But one thing you also have to understand is whenever we're manipulating our KCs, it's much different than when we were manipulating our delta H's and our delta E's back in Gen Chem 1. And so whenever we manipulated these, and by manipulate I mean switch the directions, change the coefficients, something like that, it's still going to affect the uh, Ks, but it's going to impact them on a much larger scale. Meaning the fact that if you multiply this entire first equation by 2, you're not just going to multiply your 4.17 by 2, you're going to multiply it by a factor of 2 or by, again, an exponent of 2. And so the same kind of deal whenever you go through and reverse these directions, you're no longer just going to be changing the sign. You can't have a negative 4.17 when you're talking about a constant here. But you can have a 1 over the 4.17. And so when you reverse these directions or whenever, again, instead of going from AB to A plus B, if you want A plus B to go to AB, then you're not only going to, again, switch the sign here, you're actually going to inverse the entire value. Or an inverse, I mean, one over whatever that value is going to be. And so let's try to take this one as a quick example here. And so as I kind of mentioned, you're given the first two equations, or sorry, chemical reactions along with their equilibrium constants. And so when we kind of go through and look at this, the first thing you should kind of assume by now, especially if you're in my class and you've taken my class before, most likely you're going to have to take two of these equations, add them up to give you the third one. I'm going to tell you now, since I'm working out the problem, I'm going to add the first two equations to get to the third equation because it's the one I don't know anything about. And so in order to do that, we have to, again, take this one step at a time, make sure our reactants are on the correct side, make sure our products are on the correct side, Make sure everything we don't want cancels out with one another. And so the first one to take a look at, our equation one here, we have our A, B going to A plus B. And so here, our A plus B, A and B are both products, whereas in our overall reaction, our A and B are both going to be reactants, meaning the fact that we have to swap these directions. A, B is not in my overall equation, so hopefully along the route that I'm going to take you, we get rid of our AB somehow, but again, kind of take that for, I guess, ignore it for right now. And so, as I kind of stated, we have to come, like, or reverse this whole direction flow. And so if we reverse things, or if we have our A plus B becoming AB, and I'll actually just rewrite it here for us just to make sure we're kind of on the same track. But now that we reverse this, again, we can't just change the sign in front of this equilibrium constant. Now we're going to actually have to change this whole value into 1 over 4.17 is going to be our brand new K or our brand new equilibrium constant for this equation the way it's written. Same kind of deal applies here. And so for whenever we look at our 2AB plus our 2A gives us 2A, 2B, here A2B is a product. Our A is a reactant. This is what I told you to ignore for now, so let's just kind of continue to ignore it for now. But the main problem kind of comes about whenever we kind of take a look at our 2AB or our 2A2B. Here we have two of them. We don't want two in our overall equation. We only want one. And so in order to get our values to correct here, we have to divide this entire U equation by two. And so when we were talking about delta H's and energies back in Gen Chem 1, if we divided the equation by 2, we divided our delta H by 2. That doesn't cut it for our equilibrium constants. If you divide this by 2, or multiply by half, you actually have to raise this to a power of whatever you multiply the coefficients by. And so as I kind of stated, if we're going to multiply this entire thing by half, 
then our 14.4 needs to be raised to a power of half. And so when you kind of go through and do this, I'm going to get rid of this times half. But when we kind of go through here, we're going to get rid of that too, get rid of that too, get rid of that too. And now we have a brand new equation. Again, this equation is what's represented by this KC equals to 14.4 raised to a power of half. Notice not multiplied, but raised to the power. And so just to kind of make sure everything's still kind of legit here, your AB, when you add the equation one and two, your AB will cancel out with your AB. Your A2B, <clears throat> excuse me, is in the right spot. You have two A's here. Oh, my erasers now are erasing. And so now we have our two A's plus our one B to give us our A to B. The way we did that is we added these two values. Something that's a little bit different when it comes to these equilibrium constants is if you add the reactions, you are multiplying the K values. And so here, it is no longer just adding these two values, or now multiplying. And so adding these two reactions means you have to multiply their K values, or without working out too much here, we have our 1 over our 4.17 times our 14.44 raised to a power of half. So when you plug this into your calculator, if you want to simplify beforehand, go for it. But if you plug into your calculator, I end up getting <coughs> excuse me, a value of 0 0.91. And so 0 0.91 is the equilibrium constant of your third value here of that 2a plus b gives you a2b.